to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Our party, the Conservative Party, is the greatest political party in the world. Yeah. One of the oldest and one of the most successful. And there's a reason for that. It's you. It's all of you in this room. Our magnificent members and activists. All of you in this hall today. And I salute you all. Your passion, your energy, your dedication. But most of all, I salute your values. The same values shared by the majority of people in our great United Kingdom. The hard-working, honest, law-abiding, who share our optimism for the future, who share pride in our great country, and they share our desire to live in a country where anyone, including the daughter of immigrants, can succeed. <laughs> Days, our Conservative government, led by our Prime Minister, has been getting on with delivering on their priorities, the people's priorities, because yet again it has fallen to our great party to lead our nation through testing times. We promised that we would get a new Brexit deal, a better deal, and we have delivered one that will maximise the opportunities of Brexit and allow us to develop new and exciting partnerships with the rest of Europe and the rest of the world without the anti-democratic backstop. Promise delivered. We promised that hospitals would get the investment they need to match the devotion of the staff in the NHS. And we're delivering on the biggest investment in hospital infrastructure in a generation. Promise delivered. And we promised without apology that our party would take its rightful place as the party of law and order in Britain once again. Yeah. And that we would stand with the brave men and women of our police and our security services. And that we would stand against the criminals who seek to do us harm. Now the recruitment of an additional 20,000 police officers has already begun. And every single one of those new officers will have increased powers to keep our families, our communities, and our country safe. And every single one of those officers can rest assured that this Prime Minister, this Home Secretary, and this party will always have their backs. That's what I mean when I say that this party is delivering on the people's priorities. And of course, that's why this election is a choice between real change or simply more uncertainty, more dither and more delay. Voters must choose between the certainty and hope that we know a functioning Conservative majority brings to our country. A vote for Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party will mean more delay and an unwanted and divisive second referendum. It would mean extreme economic policies, spelling disaster for Britain, with the hard-working majority once again left foot in the bill for Labour's financial ruin. It would even result in a Prime Minister who refuses to condemn and stand against vile anti-Jewish racism. And a vote for the Lib Dems, of course, will result in Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister. Yeah. And a vote for the Brexit Party will result in a Brexit blocking, democracy denying, coalition of chaos with more indecision, confusion and uncertainty. Yeah. And with Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister and in charge of our economy, we will see more delay, more dither, and 2020 spent having two more referendums. To all of you, I say we can never allow that to happen. Or 
as one of our greatest Conservative Prime Ministers famously once said, no, no, no. <laughs> so only Conservative majority government will deliver and we will get Brexit done with the Prime Minister's Great New Deal, finally giving businesses and families the economic certainty they all need to live their lives and plan for the future. And when we get Brexit done, we will get Parliament working for you, the British people, improving local high streets and bus services, investing more money in schools, and introducing an Australian-style points-based immigration system, one that works in the best interests of Britain, one that attracts and welcomes the best and the brightest, and one that is under the control of the British government. So to everyone in the hall today, let's get out there, let's get out there together and deliver our message. Only the Conservatives will get Brexit done. Only the Conservatives will deliver on the people's priorities. And only the Conservative Party will get our country back on the road to a brighter future. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the chairman of the Conservative Party, James Cleverley. What's, what's the line? What's the line? I love you back. Uh, we, we didn't want this election. We didn't want this election. Our hand was forced. But we do need this election. We need to break the Brexit deadlock and get on with delivering on voters' priorities. Something the last Parliament proved incapable of doing. Rather strangely, for an opposition leader, Jeremy Corbyn didn't want this election either. <laughs> I mean, surely the only opposition leader in history to have repeatedly blocked an election. But, ladies and gentlemen, we know why, don't we? Yeah, he's running scared. He'd prefer to play parliamentary games hide from accountability, safely in opposition. He'd rather do that than go to the country and try to explain where his party stands on the single biggest issue of the day. And you can understand why. Because Labour's Brexit position is as clear as mud. <laughs> Corbyn, just think about this for a moment, Corbyn wants to renegotiate a new withdrawal agreement and then, in all probability, campaign against it <laughs> in a second referendum. Months, years down the drain, more pointless delay, billions paid to the EU so that MPs can continue to not make a decision. And Remember, with no credible chance of becoming Prime Minister, Joe Swinson's only role would be to prop up a Marxist government. <laughs> Unable to secure a majority himself, Corbyn would end up in hock to the Lib Dems and the SNP. And the price for their support? Yeah. To, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two referendums in two years. Two once-in-a-generation decisions retaken in an attempt to overturn results that they don't like. But do not fear. Voters are not daft. They will see through Labour's lies, see through their fantasy economics, and recognise their fundamental disdain for the British voters. But 
their own incompetence aside, there is another crucial reason that Jeremy Corbyn has been running scared of an election. And that reason will be on stage speaking to you very shortly. <laughs> See if you can guess. You elected him with an overwhelming majority in the leadership election. I've worked with him at City Hall, and I've seen what he can achieve. We have a leader who is an optimistic, energetic person, who for good reason spooks the left. He is a formidable campaigner, instinctively understands what the country needs, and is the perfect antidote to the relentless pessimism of Labour. There really is no better custodian for our nation's future as we set out to take advantage of new opportunities. You know who I'm talking about, and he'll be speaking just after this short video. To avoid any discussion, this parliament had become dysfunctional. Here with a working majority in Parliament, then I will get Parliament working again for you. When people get up at 5am to get their businesses ready, when they risk their own money or mortgage their own homes to develop a new product or a new venture, when they have the guts to find a new market at home or abroad, we don't sneer at them, we cheer for them and do what we can to help because we understand that it's only by having a dynamic free market economy that we can deliver on our program of uniting this country and levelling up with infrastructure, education and technology. And it's only if you have great public services that you can have a successful market economy. So I say come with us. That's the choice of this election. I hope very much that you will support us. Let's get Brexit done and unleash the potential of the whole United Kingdom. Thank you very much. It's absolutely fantastic to be here in Birmingham, where our great, our great Conservative mayor has already taken the precaution of having every street named after him. And, <laughs> and, and, great, and great to see so many of you here. What a fantastic crowd at the beginning of what I think is the most important election our country has faced for a, for a generation. I can imagine there might be some people here who weren't too keen on having a general election in the run-up to Christmas. I was, I'm, if, if you did think that, I'm, I'm with you. I didn't want an election, and no Prime Minister, frankly, I love my job, no Prime Minister wants uh, an election, particularly when uh, I'm enjoying it. There's so much that we want to get on and do, but my friends, we have no choice. We have a parliament that is paralysed, blocked, generally incapable of digestive function as, a, as an anaconda that has swallowed a tapir, <laughs> neither moving one way or the other, if you see what I mean. Uh, this parliament just refuses to get Brexit done. And that's, of course, bad for our democracy because we asked the people of this country whether they wanted to stay in the EU. We told them time and again that we would honour their decision, didn't we? We told them whatever they voted for, leave or remain, we would put it into effect. And yet for three and a half years, we have seen non-stop political manoeuvring to frustrate Brexit and thwart the will of the people. And the result is that the whole Brexit delay is holding us all back. It's like a, a bendy bus. I banned them in London. A bendy bus jackknifed on a yellow box junction. Nobody can get round it. It's blocking the traffic in every direction. And the uncertainty and the delay are bad for the country because people need to plan, they need to make investments, to hire new employees, to, to buy new homes. And we need a new election, we need an election and a new parliament because we can't go on like this. 
and because now is the time to make a change and unleash that tidal wave of investment that's going to flow into this country, a great surge of confidence into the UK. And we can do that in just a few weeks because I'm proud of many things that we've done in the last 108 days. I think it is 108 days. The biggest investments in the NHS for a generation, 40 new hospitals green-lighted as a result of decisions taken by this government, levelling up education funding around the country, more for primary and secondary schools across the country, 20,000 more police officers. Uh, Pretty was just talking to you, wasn't she? Great job, great job, Pretty, recruiting 20,000. And I've met, I met, I met, I met some of them. I'm, I'm proud to say I've already met some of the, some of the recruits. Gigabit broadband, gigabit broadband. Eight years ahead of schedule, sprouting uh, through every orifice, every home, uh, like a kind of, like a kind of, I'm very informative vermicelli. I don't know what a gigabit broadband is. It's going to be fantastic for our country. Uh, we're going to have an infrastructure revolution across the UK. I'm proud of many, many things that we're doing. But most of all, I'm proud of our deal. The deal that they said was impossible. The deal they said we, we couldn't do. And it's a great deal. I've, you know, I've heard some people in the last few days trying to attack our deal. My friends are trying, you know, trying to cast aspersions on it. And uh, I remind me a bit of candle sellers at the dawn of the age of the electric light bulb, or makers of typewriters on beholding their first laptop computer. They have a terrible sense that they're about to lose their market because this deal, this deal deli delivers everything that I campaigned for, uh, for for Brexit. We take back control of our money so we can spend millions more uh, every week on the NHS or, or whatever priorities we want, hundreds of millions. We can take back control of our borders with an Australian-style points-based system so we can bring in people, uh, whether they're scientists or agricultural workers that this country needs, uh, or, but we can control it. We can take back control of our laws so we can do things in our own way, do things differently and better when we choose, from free ports to free trade deal, from banning the cruel live shipment of animals to cutting VAT on tampons. We can do things differently in the UK. And, and, and under this deal, the crucial thing is the whole of the UK comes up, comes out of the EU, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, the whole entire and perfect. And this deal is ready to go. It's done. I mean, Parliament, before par they, they infuriatingly uh, refused to, to the, before they delayed it, they actually gave it a preliminary seal of approval, if you remember. It said, it's there. You just whack it in the microwave. <laughs> gas mark, gas, I don't know what, well, I'm not very good at cooking, but you know, <laughs> a ga gas mark four, it's there. It's ready, it is ready to go. Prick the lid, uh, put it in, <laughs> and, and then we can get on, we can get on, we, do, we put this, get this deal through Parliament and then get on with all the fantastic projects in which this government is engaged, uniting and levelling up our country, giving people opportunity across our country with better education, better infrastructure and new technology. That is what this government is all about. Uh, it's about giving, giving hope and chance. And, we, and we, can make, we can make those investments. We can make those, we can, we can make those investments as Conservatives as Conservatives with credibility precisely because we have taken the tough decisions to restore public finances. We've shown that we can, we manage the economy well and we now, we've had, uh, we've got uh, nine years of uninterrupted growth, the economy about 20% bigger than it was when we took over in 2010 and record employment in this country. Why? Because we understand the importance of a dynamic market economy. And there is a reason why this party is more trusted on health. Matt Hancock, more trusted on health than his counterpart, uh, and more trusted on education. Gavin Williamson, more trusted than his Labour counterpart on education. Because people can see, people can see that we understand how to pay for that whole uh, society and how we can ensure that society has the wealth to pay for fantastic public services and infrastructure. And, and, and that is the, the, the balance and the symmetry at the heart of our one nation modern conservatism. And that is uh, the problem with Bolivarian revolutionary socialism as practiced by Jeremy Corbyn and the Labour Party. And the Labour Party always runs out of other people's money. That's what happens. And it will happen again. It's going to happen. It's going to happen very soon under this lot. Because they have, 
they have a they have a deranged plan to spend 196 billion pounds on their friends in the unions on renationalisation, and to do it, they're going to raise taxes on pensions on corporations to the highest level in in uh, in Europe on inheritance uh, on homes on gods. It's a huge list. It's a huge list, and. Uh, as, I, as I said before, the, the tax on gods, I mean, Seven Oaks have to change their name to Three Oaks as a result of what they've And, and they, 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 know, they know themselves. Look at what they're doing. Look at the preparations that they are making. They know that their policies for the economy are ruinous because John McDonnell, remember John McDonnell? He was the guy who was sapped by Ken Livingston, uh, sapped by him for, 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 for preparing a fictitious budget for the, GL, uh, the GLC. Uh, John McDonnell, who's even to the left of, of, of Corbyn, says he's preparing for a run on the pound and, and that he wants to restore exchange controls, which we haven't seen uh, for decades in this country. And so the, the choice before us is very stark and very clear. Uh, I say to everybody, I say to all of you here, to everybody watching, come with us, which is a party that supports a fantastic education for every child in this country, because we believe in opportunity across this country. Yeah. Or, or, go, or go, with, go with Jeremy Corbyn, go with Jeremy Corbyn and, and the Labour Party, who want to expropriate, who want to expropriate the property of schools and abolish Ofsted, Abolish Ofsted, which actually uh, protects kids from bullying in the classroom. We support our armed forces. We believe them. He actually said he wants to, he wants to ban them. We back our police in the fight against street crime and knife crime. His party thinks that stop and search is oppressive and inappropriate. We want to control our immigration system. He wants unlimited and uncontrolled immigration, no matter what pressure that puts on public services such as the NHS. We want our country to stand tall in the world and to stick by our allies and our values. Well, he's so consumed with a juvenile dislike of America that he actually sides with the mullahs of Tehran rather the, than Washington. And when Russia ordered the poisoning of innocent civilians in Salisbury, he sided with Vladimir Putin. And there's a, there's a, there's a key difference that we all face at this election, and that is, above all, come with us and we will get Brexit done. Yeah. Whereas this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy wants nothing more, this guy wants nothing more, nothing more than, than dither and, and delay. He wants a referendum on Scotland because he's told the, he's told the Scott Nats that he'll, he'll, he's happy to break up the union if they sustain him in power. And of course, he wants another referendum on the EU. Unbelievable. I mean, he said tonight he wants to, he wants to have another extension uh, of, so that he can, he can have an, 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 another negotiation. But he, it's not at all clear what he wants to achieve in this negotiation. Does anybody know what he wants to achieve? I, I, we don't know. We don't know what question he would like to put to the electorate in this, in this referendum. We don't even know what his own position is. Is he for leave? Is he for leave or for remain? Is he for, in or out? Do you know? I don't know. Is it forwards or back? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he knows himself. In fact, the only, the only bit of flotsam of intelligence to have emerged from the Bermuda Triangle of, <laughs> of Labour's Brexit policy is that they're preparing, as I think James just said, they're preparing to do a new deal and then campaign against it six months later with all the futility of those suicidal knights in Monty Python. But, <laughs> but there is one thing we do know. There's one thing we do know about his policy, and that is that it meet more Another referendum on the EU, another Brexit referendum means more delay, it means more uncertainty, it means more acrimony and division in our country when this country is aching to move on. So let's, let's make... So, so let's make... So let's make next year the year of prosperity and growth. Prosperity and growth, not the year of two chaotic referendums. And if I come back with a working majority in Parliament, then I will get Parliament working for you. And on day one, and on day one, on day one of the new Parliament in December, we will start getting our new deal through so we get Brexit done in January and put the uncertainty behind us. Let's make 2020 about the people of this country and not about its politicians. Let's get out of the rut 
of the last three years and get on with our work as Conservatives of making this country the greatest place in the world to live. The greatest place to start a family, the greatest place to send your kids to school, to start a business. The place that leads the world in clean, green technology and tackling climate change and greenhouse gases. Let's get Brexit done, my friends, and get on with our project of sensible, moderate, sensible, moderate, but tax-cutting one nation conservative spreading hope and opportunity across the whole of the UK and let's unleash the potential of this country. Thank you all very much for coming tonight and I'll see you at the barricades. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.